Welcome to Inspire Her Orchids, Venomous Narcissist Recoveries Diaries, Episode 2, The Three Faces of the Narcissist. We all know narcissists tend to hide their true self, what they need from you during the attachment stage, their seemingly loving persona eventually unmasked to a vengeful, cruel person, two sides of the same coin, both sharp and soft. The most important part of understanding what led you to encounter or experience the narcissist in your life lies with understanding the first stage of the encounter, whether that be a family or a relationship. The narcissist heavily relies on portraying and introducing their false self. Due to this, they are very meticulous in presenting to people in their lives who they really are. This is due to them needing to ensure the upkeep of the power can be obtained. The three sides to the narcissist are the person they show themselves to be in the public eye, the person behind the four walls in private, and lastly, the person they really are in secret. 1. The public self. The narcissist in public can always be seen to be helping others a hero to the neighborhood, family or friends, running to the rescue, smiling and laughing wholeheartedly, a genuinely nice person. Two, the public persona. You will always find them treating others better than you. By doing this, they create a self-invalidating trigger to your system to make you question what it may be or how you interacted with them for you to be treated so differently. Narcissist mothers or fathers tend to do this whilst raising a child. By doing so, they school this child in the way of thinking. Even early from a young age, these emotional scars are triggers, trigger points that end up enabling those who have been exposed to this emotion in indirect manipulation and treatment to become accustomed to it and then in turn end up being in a narcissistic relationship depending entirely on the validation that was lacking during childhood. I will, however, cover this point better in my series, The Narcissist Inflicts Wounds from Birth. Their public persona is very much like a chameleon, changing to the environment so that the true self can never be seen. And thirdly, the private self. Towards those who the narcissist may even envy or rely on for narcissistic supply, the narcissist can prove to be cold, have immediate change when people leave or join settings, doesn't talk, puts immediate family down, never compliments someone's hard work, always ensuring that they undermine achievements. The true colours of the narcissist try to hide behind are usually fearful, insecure, an inconsistent fear of judgment. They see the world as unsafe, they can have a hurting or immature or self-loathing attitude and can't admit that the problem usually lies with them and is in constant denial. The person you tend to see in private will create an illusion of a genuine character and ensure that this person you either confide in is trustworthy. Ensuring they build up enough confidence in you and things about you they can use in future to manipulate and control you in one form or another. These can be forms of emotional, financial abuse, gaslighting situations, emotional triggers and weaknesses that you may have confided in them about that they plan on throwing back in your face. The narcissist's power is always to undermine and destroy in secrecy. Narcissists are extremely competitive. Their love can easily turn into hate when they discover that the qualities you have are not traits that they have. They become jealous and angry towards you. They can show this subtly by embarrassing you in front of others or putting you down indirectly or directly. They try to compete with you in every possible way. A small example. I had a friend of mine recently who explained to me she wanted to enter into the childcare sector actually doing a job role that her narcissistic parent had done in her younger life. When the narcissistic parent was told about this, the response was, I would have made money if I didn't listen to you and stayed in that role. My friend explained to her mum that at the age she made a comment to the mum about changing careers. She wasn't expecting the mum to take her seriously 
and that she shouldn't have listened to her because she was a child and she was unaware of what she was saying. This is because narcs lack enthusiasm for your achievements. They tend to show little support or when you're down or may even need them and they're going through the hovering stage or the attachment stage. They want you to feel on top and want to celebrate what you're doing only to eventually intentionally devalue your accomplishments by not showing up or being supportive, especially if their accomplishments as possible can exceed their own. The narc's response to her daughter was, well, we all do things. I mean, looking back, if I had made better decisions before I had you, I would have been better off. Actually, behind closed doors, my friend would actually put her phone on speaker and I would hear the most unkind comments that would degrade and shame and really break someone's confidence. A completely different person to the mother I met when she invites me around for dinner. On numerous occasions, the knock mother would insult her on her lack of life choices and that the mother knows best and she should listen to the mother after all. When my friend made achievements in her personal life, these were never mentioned to the narc's family, which I found very odd. However, the arguments that they always had, the mother and the daughter, were always mentioned to the family, who seemed to be the enablers and quite frankly, the flying monkeys in the treatment of my friend, based on over 25 years of experiences. When this was brought up by the daughter to the mother, the mother did what most narcissists do. She was in complete denial and projection blame shifting, as you can see from my examples. Narcissists will even blame you for the very acts that they have committed, and then they will act like they're so innocent and you're evil, even if you haven't done anything. My friend explained that she felt she had to be the version of a perfect, a perfect person. She felt like a scapegoat to the family. She said she was never emotionally and physically abused in a way where she thought that it would affect her until one day she sat down and she thought of the constant emotional abuse she was subjected to by her mother. She felt like a slave, she felt mistreated for no reason and she felt inadequate. Treated less than to make you feel like you are what you are, a powerful human being, is what narcissists are very good at. She was in fact moulded from a young age to be the family scapegoat. Even though she was encouraged in the beginning, when her achievements were exceeding their own, it was an issue. Remembering this and having left a relationship, friendship or family dynamic, where a narcissist has inflicted pain on you and you plan on healing, my episodes hopefully will teach you a lot about that. The roots of the cause, why it occurred and what you need to do to heal. The post I will be uploading will cover all areas of how the narcissist was in your life and focus on mostly the ways to heal from it. I would have never been able to start healing myself if I didn't have no contact with the narcissist. It seems impossible to go no contact, especially in the beginning, but trust the process. After a few days, weeks, months, maybe even years, the healing path is different for all. After whatever amount of time you need to start to experience peace of mind again, the constant anxiety, terror and dread stop. Once you're able to feel the calm, safe, consistent energy radiating from within yourself, the knock will eventually lose all their power. The spirit of a narcissist tends to delight in your suffering. With no contact, they're not able to see you suffer or regain your strength at all. Throughout my podcast sessions, I will use various examples alongside what we learn on this healing journey. Feel free to leave any testimonies to help others in the comments section. You will learn your empathy is a strength relied upon by the weak. Your kindness is envied by those who have none. Your strength is pulled upon by those whose insecurities are projected onto you. And how to see the cord and then cut it. Dealing with a narcissist leads you to confront and deal with your own past and unpack your own baggage, your inner wounds and areas of weakness, which leaves us vulnerable to choosing or staying with a narcissist in the first place. Once you heal, you'll become more discerning, self-aware, 
wiser and stronger and will learn to radically uphold your own personal values and standards and boundaries, which, if you are molded from a young age or from birth in a narcissistic environment, were completely eradicated. It's a win in the end because eventually you will learn to look back and find love in the mirror before you consider finding it outside of yourself. Self-accountability is a must. I honestly appreciated the lessons I learned from my friend and helped her move on finally realizing her worth. Until next time, stay safe, stay true and be mindful to you.